Okay, today on Everyday HDR, I'm going to teach you a new trick that I just accidentally figured out called uh, well, what I like to call high pass texturing, or I'm going to try and coin it the rudest texturing method. I mean, there's all these other people out there that have methods coined after them. Why can't I, right? All right, so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is just go into this image. I've got it open. I want to edit this thing. I want to make it look pretty crazy. So I always start every image off by duplicating the layer. Press Control J or Command on the Mac. Duplicate the layer. Now I'm going to do a curves, and I'm going to do something a little different. Instead of you know pulling these guys down and moving this and manipulating the uh, curve using the point, I'm going to zoom in pretty close and find an area that I want to call black. And when I click here, this is my black eyedropper. This is my 50% gray eyedropper, and this is my 100% white eyedropper. So I'm going to click on the black eyedropper and find black. Uh, too dark. Too dark. Okay, that looks about right. So you, what you notice is that it also changed the the, uh, the white balance of the picture by making that area dark. It makes everything a little warmer. I'll fix that later. So the second thing I'm going to do is a levels adjustment and just kind of pull some of that light back in mainly right in here I want to see that Okay. so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the layer again move it up to the top and now I want to select out all of the sky area because I'm going to do something with the sky so you can use your quick selection tool to go around just grab the sky and I don't know if you notice but I always make sure that my quick selection tool is a very small um, a very small brush because it selects things a lot slower than the larger brush does typically when you start selecting things with the larger brush it tries to grab a lot of the, the stuff that you don't necessarily want to grab so I'm going to go back and now I'm going to put a mask on it and then I'm going to close everything else out because I want to really want to look at just what I've got going on here and then I'm going to go to filter pixel bender I've used this a bunch of times in past tutorials and what it does is it gives you a bunch of other filters that uh, the people at Photoshop have made and they're pretty cool but uh, the only one I really uses the oil paint one. I've already got it set up to about where I'd like it to be. Actually, I don't anymore. It was. So let me just show you. I'll go through and uh, stylization is obviously how much style the, the, the brush strokes of the oil paint filter are putting on the image. Cleanliness is how clean the strokes are. I like them really clean. Colorization will change the color within the strokes. Brush scale is how large the strokes are going to end up. And then contrast is how much contrast is in between each stroke. And I think that looks about good for me. Now this is only going to work on the sky at this point because I've, I went ahead and masked out this the uh, the lighthouse. So let's see what we have here. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with that. So now after looking at this, I don't really like how uh, purple the background looks. So I'm going to go ahead and desaturate that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a hue saturation adjustment. And I'm going to hold Alt or Option on a Mac and click right in between. You see that little thing that pops up? It's like a white, black, and gray looking thing. Go ahead and click that right in between those two. What that does is it, that tells Photoshop that this hue saturation level uh, adjustment layer is only going to affect the layer directly below it. That's what that arrow right there shows. And I'm just going to go ahead and desaturate that. And if I was doing this, uh, I would get a little bit more nitpicky. I would go in here and I would fix up those areas uh, 
in between all the posts, but for your sake, I'm not going to spend the 15 minutes to select all that out. So then I, I'm almost satisfied with this image, but I kind of want to throw a texture on there, but I have the texture in the background, so what am I going to do? Well, I have a folder of textures, so when I go out and I do my shoots, I pretty much go out and just take pictures of everything. You see there's a banana here, um, there's some wood here, a uh, little spores on rocks, little growths on rocks. And I'm just going to go ahead and select uh, something pretty grungy looking with a lot of texture in it. Uh, let's go with like this. Yeah, this should work. I'm going to open that. And I'll rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. And now what I'm going to do is a high pass, uh, like I would do a high pass sharpen. So you can go ahead and duplicate this layer and go to Overlay, and then go to Filter, and then go to Other, and go to High Pass. And what this does is, it, this is your method of high pass sharpening an image when you're done. But I accidentally found out that if you take the high pass from an image and put that on top of a completely different image, you get the texture of the image before but overlaid nice on top of the image you're working with. So it works out pretty conveniently. So I'm going to go and get a little bit of texture going on. You can see how there's a, a nice contrast between the texture there. And I really don't care about this background layer. All I care about is this gray layer here that is set to overlay. And now when I bring this over to my lighthouse picture and overlay it onto my lighthouse picture, you can see the texture that is, is there on top of my lighthouse. Pretty cool, huh? That's without it, that's with it. And of course I'm going to bring that down a little bit because it's a little bit too much for me. Go to like the 58, 59 percentage, zoom out, and now I've got this grungier texture over top of my lighthouse image. And then at that point, what I would do is I would go ahead and uh, make another mask for it. And then just start painting out the areas that I don't want to be hit with my texture. And of course, I'm going to use my Wacom tablet for that because it makes it nice and easy. Since my background is already textured with that nice little oil paint that I've got going on, I'm not going to put the texture on top of that oil paint because it would just distract from it. And if you make a mistake, press the X button and that will allow you to switch from black to white and then just go ahead and paint that area back in that I accidentally hit there. So then when this image is done, as you'll see it when it's done, I, I put a... Uh, a uh, vignette on it. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for, vignette. And to do that, I'm going to make a stamp of this image. And to make a stamp of it, I'm going to press Control, Shift, Alt, and then E on the topmost layer. Again, that's Control, Shift, Alt. Kind of a little uh, claw you got to get your hand in. Control, Shift, Alt, or Command, Shift, Option, and then E. And that's going to make a stamp of w exactly what we've got going on. So you see as we minimize these layers. Nothing's happening. The reason why is because this is the copy of everything that we've just done. And then what I'll go ahead and do is add that vignette. Go to lens correction filter, lens correction, then go to custom, and then add that vignette to the end. And that's about it. So that's eight minutes of, nine minutes, sorry, and 39 seconds of how to fix up an image.